Okay, so before I go on here with my music kind of spread thingy, um, I would like to answer some more questions about books and fairy tales. So there was a question if I have a favorite book, a favorite poem, um, or a favorite fairy tale, and which was my favorite fairy tale during my childhood. Um, and if I ever had um, an idea for a character or a fictional world, uh, what is my favorite genre of book? Um, yeah, that kind of questions. So let's start with the fairy tales. I have the big luck that I have two fairy tale books um, from my childhood here. Um, this one is Das Tapfere Schneiderlein, so these are obviously in German. Um, I don't know how to translate that into English. I have asked the translator, but he couldn't give me any uh, <laughs> answer that sounded um, good to me so or correct to me. So um, if I translate that word by word, it would mean the brave dressmaker. I don't know if that is an English uh, name for a fairy tale. <laughs> I really don't know, but that's the one fairy tale that I had in my childhood and that I really loved and love until today. And that is, this is the so story of Schneewittchen, and that's Snow White in English. Um, and mm, to be honest, um, it was not because of the fairy tale itself that these both books were my favorites um, during my childhood and they are my favorites until today as well but it was because of the pop-up thingy here that the book has so as you can see this is a pop-up book Why, when you flip the page then these characters come here and um, yeah you can explore different things here in the book and there are also some you know <laughs> call to actions <laughs> I would say and this was really really cool for me um, while I was a child I yeah had these books every time I think uh, every day um, during my childhood and I was flipping through them and I'm really happy that I have them in such a good condition um, in my life now because yeah it's really really cool um i thought about a way how i could include this uh, to my 365 days journal here but until now i haven't uh, come up with a really good idea how to do that i guess it would be cool to um, put some of those pages to my scanner and scan the images and then use them in some way here in my journal but I will not do that in this video it would be way too long and I have to think about um, how I can manage that um, and of course I don't want to destroy these books I mean we all love children's books and you know use them in our junk journal projects but I can't do that and I of course can't cut these books and use the original images but perhaps it's an idea to make a copy of of those and then um, use them in some way. To answer the question, um, what is my favorite book? Um, that is really hard for me because um, I really like mm, different kinds of books. But um, if I have to choose one author that um, is really impressive and really, um, yeah, also inspiring for me, then I would like to mention Franz Kafka. Um, he has, for example, written a story about a man who has turned into a really a strange creature. Um, in German, this story is called um, Die Verwandlung. That means the transformation in English. And I have to say, Franz Kafka is... Uh, yeah, if you know him and you know his books, you know that he is really hard to understand. What he is has written in his books and his stories is really, really hard to understand. Um, and my first contact to this author came when I was in the middle school and my teacher for German um, told us about Franz Kafka. Um, I think he was his favorite author and... This teacher, he was 
he was a very, very important man for me during my time in school. Um, he taught us very, very much things around the lessons that we had in school. I mean, he um, said we have to read this or that book. And when we did that and we talked about this book and uh, learned something about the author and the story in the book and that stuff, he told much things around that. And also um, he gave us also many um, private um, feelings about his own uh, education with books and authors and uh, authors and that stuff um it's hard for me to explain that in english but he was a really strong teacher for me he is in my eyes the best teacher in this world i've learned so much from him and um he brought me and that is a really really massive thing he brought me to this interest for all of those older authors like Goethe, Schiller and all of those. Um, and I was at uh, my uh, parents' home. I mean, I lived with my parents, of course, when I went to school. And um, my father had some um, tiny books from all of those older uh, German authors or books that were writ written in German, but really old books and nothing that a teenager would normally read, let me say it like that. So um, I took all of those books and I have read everything. I've soaked every word from those books and that was all because of this teacher. And uh, yeah, that's not normal, I would say. And this is something that still is really inspiring for me um, in my Uh, life now as well. Um, it can be that I go into a bookshop and I see a book, a title or the design of a cover or I read something that's really old and from those classic um, books that we all know from the past and there can be one sentence, one word or even the design of the book cover um, that inspires me for my junk journal projects, that in inspires me for my own art. It can be that I'm in this bookshop and I see that and I ran home and then, um, you know, do my things here. So that's, um, yeah, not so easy to answer for me um, because I need, uh, I need this challenging uh, feeling behind reading a book. I mean, if I want to um, relax, if I want to have something that brings me down from a hard day or something like that, then I wouldn't read such strong books. But um, if I need inspiration and if I need something that challenges me, I need these hard to understand books that's not a sentence those books that are hard to understand um, and where you perhaps have to read some pages twice to understand that i need that for learning for growing for inspiration for everything then there was this question uh were you ever a writer or um Did you have an idea for a character or a fictional world? And, um, yeah, <laughs> um, I have written two children's books. One is in the public. You can find that on Amazon as well. And the other one was a private uh, book that I have written. I have um, an example from that book for myself. I mean, I can flip through it and I can read it, but uh, that's not in the public, but the other one is in the public. Um, and that book is called Alti und die Heffersons. So Alti and the Heffersons. Alti is the name of a dog and um, the Heffersons is a family. So that's a f family name. And there's a little girl called Sue. She is meeting a dog that suddenly um, is speaking to her. And she is building a really big friendship with this speaking dog. Yeah, <laughs> that's my book that I have written. I'm really proud of that, by the way. And there was another question. I think I've missed that uh, in the meantime. Um, if I have a favorite poem, 
Um, so um, I I can't say that I have a favorite poem. I can't name a favorite poem uh, because it's the same thing um, as with the books. I need something that challenges me and that's, yeah, you know, um, that I perhaps can't understand on the the first glance when I first read it. Uh, when I had this really um, impressive teacher for German in school, um, I was reading some poems from Erich Fried. Um, he is um, an Austrian poet. He was really inspiring for me during this time when I uh, was with this German teacher, as I told you, in, in my time in school. Okay, so I would like to continue this spread about my favorite music and also um, add some more uh, lyrics to my pages here. I think I will perhaps go to this page or even to this page. I don't know how much space I will need. I will not go to this page because I am afraid of destroying this newspaper here. That is from 1995 and um, my grandma has... Uh, cut that out from a newspaper. I think she used this as a reference photo for her own oil paintings. Um, as you perhaps know, my grandma um, did much things with oil, oil paint. And I think that's the reason why she has collected this. And I'm a little bit afraid of uh, yeah, destroying this page. So I think I will use this uh, here and uh, as a flip like that um, then this red is also not so massive um, and the reason why I have chosen this page is by the way that here are those painted flowers and as I told you before my favorite flowers are all the flowers that are painted especially with oil paint and that's the reason why I have chosen this flip page so that I have that here on my um, spread about favorite things as well perhaps it's an idea for you um, as well you don't have to um, always take photos or paint something you can also use some newspaper um, images and include them into your journal of course i have backed this with a, um, an old um, book page here so that it is really sturdy and i also really like this this sound of the paper really really much okay so let's start with this woman she is called ina muller ina muller is a german speaking singer and she comes from the very north of Germany. I was born in Germany as well, but not so uh, high in the north of Germany. But um, I can understand her special dialect because my mother has spoken a similar dialect as well. And that's the reason why I can understand that relatively well. For me, she is the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, yeah, if I, <laughs> if I, you know, would transform my uh, sexual orientation <laughs> one day and I could choose a woman to fall in love with, then it would be Ina Müller. She is, for me, the most beautiful woman. I, I can't say it in another, in another way. She is... Yeah, I've used this word character in this video very often, but she's a character. She is so funny, so womanish at the same time. She makes jokes about herself, about her body, about her language, about the area where she was born and that stuff. She's the most funniest woman in this world and the most beautiful woman as well. <laughs> Als ob mir das was schön. Du darfst an ihr mal die Salben fragen, wie fucken er weg nur allein. Und ich, ich mach hier bloß weg. Ich steh hier mit meinem Bein. Ich weiß, wo ich nur lebe, weh. Und ich denk drüber nur, ob ich ohne was zu sagen bin, weil ich eh 
mach hier bloß weg. Er kann nicht mehr. Mein Kopf hang schäft mich herrlich quer. Er kann dir nicht mehr umholen. Er will mich nicht in Wind holen. The other day I have talked to Susanne from Bollenhut Art. Um, we both uh, had put our heads together and then we came up with this idea of this 365 days journal and also with this idea that you can ask us some questions. And we have talked about, um, yeah, how um, difficult it can be to answer to a question that you have asked and at the same time whoo, my goodness she wants to go away Ina stay here in my journal you have to go here in my journal perhaps I should use this clamp Louisa that would be really helpful uh, we have talked about um, how difficult it can be to answer to a question that you have asked if we want to be honest and of course we want to be honest to you if you ask something we want to give an honest answer to you and that sometimes even if the question is relatively easy not so easy um, I mean I'm working in a really personal journal here and of course I want to be honest to myself I want to um, honor your questions. I want to be authentic on my channel. I want to tell you something about myself. And that means I have to open my heart and my soul. And I have to talk about really private things. And I also don't want to have a journal here on my desk that's also for the public. That's also meant to show on my YouTube channel. I mean, I want to have a personal journal. And this is something um, that is really, really hard sometimes. Um, it's not that I uh, think, uh, oh, what have I done? Uh, this idea is terrible. Of course not. But um, try that out. <laughs> so perhaps you have a YouTube channel as well. And perhaps you want to uh, take this idea. And perhaps you want to do something similar for your subscribers as well. And for your w viewers. So that they can... Um, learn something more about yourself as well, so then um, this is a really cool thing. So uh, try that out. It's it's really, you can learn a lot. And you can also learn a lot about yourself, I have to say. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel and you do this only for yourself, take those questions from our videos and try to uh, journal about those questions by yourself. I promise you, you will learn things about yourself that you haven't known before.
choose a quote from Ina Müller, I have chosen a song that's called Nes in Wind, that means something like Nose in the Wind. She is singing that in her dialect. As I said, she um, yeah, sings this really extreme north, um, this dialect from the north of Germany. Um, and yeah, I have to choose one song here, otherwise I <laughs> have to make a whole junk journal about Ina Müller and her songs. That's not possible. <laughs> I mean, that would be possible, but that's not my goal for this thing here, what I'm doing here. Um, but if I have to choose a song, it's definitely one of those songs that is written in this dialect. When she sings this dialect, it's so, so cool, so emotional. This language, I mean, it's German, but it's such a cool dialect. It's so heartwarming and also hurting at the same time. It's, it's, oh, it's really, really, really cool. Um, and I have chosen this um, thing here. I'm just thinking how I want to arrange that here. Here I have written the first uh yeah the first words of this song and if you read this then it's a context when you are here and you go on here so that's the rest of this text here um ich weet wo ich nu lever wer sounds a little bit strange when i'm saying it because i'm not able to uh speak this dialect even if i can understand most of it and this uh quote means um, something like, I know where I'd rather be now. Hopefully, uh, my translator has translated that right. Um, I have problems with small words like this, rather, and, and that stuff. Um, but hopefully that's <laughs> yeah, something that makes sense to you. So this song tells um, something about... Um, her actual life that she is really frustrated about um, one and the same questions all the time. She is um, a little bit overwhelmed by her actual life. It's boring for her. She wants to see something different and she um, wants to put her feet into the sand and um, wants to have the wind blowing around her nose. That's, yeah. What's <clears throat> what this song says? Um, another band that I would like to mention as my one of my favorite bands um, is a German band as well. Um, they uh, in the past they were three people in the band. They were called Ganz schön Feist, and now they are only two. Um, one of them has left the band and now they are called Die Feisten and they are making the most amazing and the most funny uh, lyrics and songs. They are so funny. Um, on the stage they are more than funny. They all are really, really funny characters. I mean, really funny men. And um, <clears throat> their lyrics are really deep uh, they make whew, oh no they make um really those um this playing with words is the main thing that they are doing um they are on the stage with really small uh in, in not small but really less instruments the main things uh, that are doing they are doing with their voices it's not an a cappella band uh, because they have instruments as well but um yeah you know really 
the focus uh, of the music is laying on those <clears throat> on those texts and um in the lyrics but uh, yeah not so much in you know playing guitar or or something like that and they are so funny and i had the big luck that i could meet them after a concert here's a picture um of me and them <laughs> Freund, der Wind ist warm, die Sonne scheint, es ist schön, es lohnt sich am See spazieren zu gehen, spazieren zu gehen, das Schiff, Seerosen, die Libellen, ein Ruderboot, alles ist so wunderbar, da fiel mir was auf, das war mir vorher gar nicht klar. Vorher gar nicht klar, Enten haben keine Ohren, wo haben sie sie verloren? Beim Fliegen abgeflogen, nach hinten weggebogen. Enten haben keine Ohren, hast du das denn nicht gewusst? Sind sie damit schon geboren? Ey, was ein riesengroßer Frust! Enten haben keine Ohren, deshalb schreien sie auch so laut. Wer hat die Ohren geklaut? Der Sommer ging ins Land. To choose um, a quote from one of their songs, I've chosen Enten haben keine Ohren, wo haben sie sie verloren? That means ducks have no ears, where have they lost them? And that's a really, really funny song and I really love this song. So, um, yeah, that's what I have written here. And I think it's also a great variation um, from this kind of quote to this handwritten thing and that's also a good uh, practice to love your own handwriting more i normally don't like my handwriting but this project with this journal is also for me a practice to to be more kind to myself and to uh yeah bring more acceptance to my handwriting do you know what i mean spaziere nicht und du schlittschuhlein ein paar runden drehen mitten in die enten rein wir haben uns nicht gesehen haben uns nicht gesehen Lag ich da, Enten um mich rum. Ich war das erste Mal ganz nah an ihnen dran und ich konnte sehen, ganz ohne Problem. Enten haben keine Ohren, in der Kälte abgefroren. Richtige Füße haben sie keine, nur aus Gummi rote Beine. Enten haben keine Ohren, hast du das denn nicht gewusst? Sind sie damit schon geboren? Ey, was ein riesengroßer Frust. Enten haben keine Ohren, deshalb schreien sie auch so laut. Wer hat die Ohren geklaut? 